it's gonna be a huge problem because Sean is, is not the type of person that would spend a lot of money on things. Parents were married in, um, and then we're gonna have a beach reception. You gonna be wearing shoes? Yes, I'm designing my. And she's very opinionated. Lace, vintage, absolutely, and then. We're gonna let her tell us what she likes or doesn't like about it. No. Number seven, Meg Liz Miller. Shopping for a wedding dress is often an enjoyable, humorous, and exciting event. One bride, Meg Liz Miller, chose to travel with her descending fiancé Jack Owalk, and as a result, her adventure took an unexpected turn. She had no idea that his presence would overshadow her dress appointment and spark a conflict over taste. I realized that I do not want my fiancé to change my mind. You want me to kick him out? Yes, please. <laughs> Okay, we found a dress she loves, but now we need to keep the fiance from throwing a tootsie. She loves this dress, so you gotta go. Jack couldn't help but chime in with his frank thoughts as the bridal consultant delicately showed a variety of stunning gowns. The co-host and fashion director, Monty, made a lighthearted remark about how the store wasn't named after Jack personally following his forthright description of certain dresses as hideous. Jack's candid description of several outfits as hideous swiftly established the tone. The situation was still dominated by Jack's influence as he disallowed Meg Liz from considering mermaid costumes. She bravely experimented with a variety of looks, unafraid to ask herself what would Jack think. Meg Liz was charmed by the first dress she put on, but her joy was marred by a nagging worry about Jack's approval. As usual, he called the outfit trashy and undesirable since it exposed too much cleavage. Meg Liz was caught between fulfilling her fiancé's wishes and remaining loyal to herself as it became increasingly apparent that Jack's vision conflicted with her own preferences. One of the hosts of the show, Lori Allen, intervened and gave Meg Liz some wise counsel, telling her to stand up for herself and figure out what she really wanted. Meg Liz found the bravery to recover her initial vision and venture into the world of mermaid-style dresses after realizing that she will be the one looking back on these wedding pictures in the future. Meg Liz felt a rush of exhilaration as she slipped into the third dress in the sought-after design. This was the outfit she had always pictured wearing on her special day. She was prepared to reveal her choice to the bridal party, feeling more self-assured than ever. There was just one catch, Jack was no longer wanted here. Meg Liz gratefully accepted Lori's gracious offer to show him the door. Meg Liz's choice was met with skepticism from her intended as Jack reluctantly left. He questioned her sudden conviction and warned that it would end in disaster. He had no idea that he would soon regret his statements. Meg Liz wore the third dress, the one that had won her heart, as the eagerly awaited wedding day approached and she smoothly walked down the aisle. Now that he was able to see his beautiful bride, Jack softly admitted defeat. He couldn't help but agree that she had made the perfect decision, praising the dress's grace and beauty as well as the way she sported it with ease. Meg Liz eventually overcame the obstacles presented by her fiancé's divergent viewpoints. She confidently accepted the dress when she discovered it and unapologetically recovered her idea of the ideal wedding attire. Meg Liz exuded confidence as she made her way down the aisle because she knew she had kept true to herself and produced an unforgettable event. Number 6. Yasmin Fragason a large entourage greeted Yasmin as she entered the bridal salon, indicating a fascinating day lay ahead. Although the crew had just received training on how to keep the bride focused, it looked like an impossible assignment with this specific bunch. Yasmin wanted to portray the part of her beloved princess, princess, and had her heart set on a storybook princess appearance. But as soon as the consultant asked about her budget, a problem surfaced. While Yasmin insisted on a $5,000 budget, her fiancé insisted on a more constrained range of $1,500 to $2,000 instead. Yasmin became annoyed by the circumstance and thought of telling her fiancé a lie about how much the gown really was because she was hesitant to give up her preferred style. Friends with me, Shona, Bernie, Tacoma, Chanel, and that's Jody. Hi, Jody. He's in the ears for the groom, her fiancé, Sean, that's my ex-boyfriend. The consultant urged Yasmin to carefully assess her budget after recognizing the potential conflicts. 
Yasmin's friend Jody was there to help her keep within budget, which added another level of intricacy. But here's the catch. The fact that Jody was the groom's ex-girlfriend made the situation unpleasant. Yasmin was advised to stay within her budget by the fashion directors and other participants, but she remained certain that her fiancé would allow her to wear the dress of her dreams. But there was still some skepticism in the air. She went on to try on the chosen gown despite the warnings. Everyone in the room was in awe of her magnificent beauty as she emerged from the dressing room and was rendered speechless. She looked stunning in the outfit, which exuded both allure and high design. It was impossible for Yasmin not to fall in love with it. However, Jody's facial expression when she spoke her viewpoint showed a mix of envy and contempt. How is this couture? Well, Jody, you're really close with Sean. What do you think? I love it. I just don't know if I'm comfortable. I think that this style is for someone who's a little bit slimmer. She made a comparison that greatly hurt Yasmin and showed no reserve from her. Her judgment was suddenly clouded by self-doubt and the outfit that had initially made her happy now made her feel uneasy. Unfazed by the criticism, Yasmin chose to try on a second gown that cost close to $4,000, despite its expensive price tag. Others comforted her that her fiancé would be prepared to cover such a cost, but Jody adamantly disagreed, insisting that only she knew him. In a terrible twist, Jody implied that Yasmin was unique and perhaps Sean wouldn't have bought the same item for her. Yasmin couldn't force herself to accept the outfit since she felt defeated. As Jody tried to destroy Yasmin's appointment and plant doubt, it became clear that her actions were motivated by envy. When all hope appeared lost, the tenacious consultant had a shocking surprise in store. She gave Yasmin a stunning slim-fit silk duchess gown that won Yasmin's heart right away. Yasmin was overcome with ecstasy and tears of joy ran down her face as she imagined herself approaching her groom as she walked down the aisle. The bride's entire entourage lavished the dress with praise and respect. Then it became clear. The dress, which had been on sale for an amazing $2,000, had originally cost $4,000. As luck finally turned in her favor, cheers broke out. Like, it's not over the top. And... <sighs> Like, I think that I would with this dress, I would. That's the dress. Is that price tag gonna make you cry too? No. <laughs> Yasmin had finally found her ideal gown, and this time she was able to accept the outfit with assurance. Yasmin triumphed over self-sabotage and self-doubt, remaining firm in her decision and prepared to go off on her path to a happy marriage. She had overcome many obstacles and had gained the wisdom to value her own thoughts above everyone else. She had learned that her voice counted and that her happiness deserved to be put first from her fight with her groom's ex-girlfriend and the financial restrictions. Number 5. Diana Kelly the 26-year-old bride-to-be Diana Kelly was about to start a lifelong journey with her high school love. They had reconnected two years prior and were deeply in love, so their love story was one of fate and second chances. Diana was a dedicated workaholic like her partner, but now it was time to concentrate on their forthcoming wedding. Diana had brought a large group, including her mother, friends, and prospective mother-in-law to her bridal gown appointment. Six years old. Who have you brought with you today? My father, Jackie, and my sister. It all comes from your actions, and I think a sweetheart neckline doesn't take anything away from that. The environment at the salon, however, was everything but peaceful. Diana's mother seemed more concerned about the opinions of their neighbors instead of Diana's wish for her wedding dress. Diana found herself caught between her own aspirations and her mother's expectations when their views collided. The gathering went silent, as if waiting for a decision when Diana finally showed off her dream dress. Diana became more nervous as a result of her mother's and the group's silence. While Diana desired for a strapless dress with a sweetheart neckline, Diana's mother preferred conventional and modest attire. Given the prominent position in the community, Diana's mother was concerned that she may draw unfavorable notice. She wished for her daughter to serve as an inspiration to young girls. Unfortunately, mother and daughter were at polar opposites of each other. The bridal advisors chose to start with the traditional option that Diana's mother liked as they prepared the outfits. Diana appeared on the street wearing the dress which had a low-key but nevertheless attractively high neckline. To her astonishment, her mother expressed her want to spend more than $7,000 on the outfit and was immediately enthralled. Feeling like I'm in a turtleneck. How much is this dress, Melissa? 
72 six. Sweetheart strapless, finding the dress that fits the role model criteria. That's second day. The consultants noted the enthusiastic response, but Diana couldn't get rid of her reservation in the back of her mind. Diana, who was split between two outfits, chose to try on a satin organza dress with a sweetheart neckline and a skirt embroidered with small flowers. Her mother's expression was disappointed as she left the dressing room. Even her sister expressed distaste at the flower-like design. The consultants, though, could see Diana's connection to the clothing and the sincere yearning in her eyes. Stress, mom, because I know you were in the other. I'm not sure. I love the neckline. This dress, my mind is just rushing. Um. The advisors made the decision to improve the presentation after carefully analyzing the circumstance. They expertly concealed Diana's shoulders and dressed her with a veil to show her as the ideal role model for her mother. The entire entourage's eyes welled up with tears as Diana reappeared in the modified outfit. They at last noticed the beauty Diana saw, the personification of her preferences and objectives. Number 4. Jenny Kissel Jenny Kissel, a native from any town, discovered herself living her dream as she set out to locate her ideal wedding dress with the aid of TLC Say Yes to the Dress. Jenny, who would soon become Mrs. Garrett Gooch, had always been captivated with the program and with her friends' encouragement, she worked up the nerve to submit an online application. Jenny was shocked when she got a response and was asked for a phone interview. TLC quickly let her know that she had been selected. Chesley and Kaylee. Is this going to be that southern country wedding? Yeah. Fashion as much as I do, I go to school for it. So I am going to have a big part in picking out her wedding gown. She called her friends excitedly and they couldn't believe what they were hearing. They were on their way to Atlanta as the adventure got underway. Jenny was full of excitement as she made her way to the bridal gown appointment with her mother, sister, and closest friends. The kindest person she has ever met was the man she was marrying, and their wedding would be a traditional Texas celebration. Jenny's notion of romantic elegance was a trumpet-style dress with tons of lace trimming. However, Jenny was heavily influenced by her closest friend Kayla, a self-described fashionista with a degree in fashion who had strong feelings on the garment. Unfortunately, Kayla was deeply upset that her buddy was getting married, which made things awkward and intimidating for Jenny. Knowing how Jenny and Kayla interacted, the astute consultants came up with a plan to keep Kayla happy and reduce any possible problems. They chose to start with Kayla's selection, a lace-free dress. Jenny donned the dress and, to her surprise, she discovered that she liked it. Jenny should wear the dress, Kayla passionately said as she beamed with delight. But Jenny still had a secret desire for a lace outfit. Her heart clung to the memory of herself wearing that gown that represented her ideal. The advisors were intrigued by Jenny's persistence and gave her a second dress, a gorgeous design with exquisite lace. Jenny slipped into it and connected with it right away. She cherished the sensation it gave her. Kayla, on the other hand, brushed it off as corny and questioned Jenny's decision. Jenny put on yet another outfit, this one completely covered in lace in her quest to consider all possibilities. An outfit that spoke to her soul was the one. Jenny discovered herself falling in love with it, unable to resist its charm despite Kayla's displeasure. Despite conflicting advice, Jenny took the brave decision to go with her heart and pick the lace-covered dress of her dreams. The experts, Jenny's mother, sister, and other friends all applauded her decision because they saw the brightness and assurance it gave her. Kayla was the only person in the room who was unable to enjoy the moment. Number 3. Jamie Sorricelli the goal of Jamie's bridal dress appointment was to locate the ideal dress for a wedding. It was supposed to be a simple, enjoyable experience. Jamie was unaware that Kelly, her best friend and a bridesmaid, had her own plans. Kelly, who had attended 21 weddings, had developed strong opinions about dress shopping and hoped to make Jamie's wedding her 15th successful choice. She had no idea that her aggressiveness would disrupt and create tension during this crucial appointment. The bridal consultant carefully listened to Jamie's preferences as the consultation got underway. Jamie had planned to stay inside her $5,000 budget while creating a stunning outfit that would astound everyone. Okay, With a little bit of sweetheart and a low back. And how about price point? Five thousand. Okay. Down on the couch now, just for a moment. Thank I'll you be so back. Much. You're welcome. Kelly, who was keen to sway the consultants' decisions, kept interjecting and asking about the outfits being chosen for Jamie in the meantime. 
The expert had to politely advise Kelly to stop giving advice she wasn't asked for and take a seat on the couch after first being patient. Kelly was eventually asked to leave by the consultant after she persisted in interrupting and even peeked at Jamie when she was trying on a dress. Jamie's crew didn't react as positively to her first outfit as she had anticipated they would. Kelly was able to leave the couch once again, meddling and attempting to be involved. Then, a catastrophe happened. Kelly was one of the many people in the room who was immediately entranced when Jamie put on a magnificent gown. But there was a catch. The dress was much out of Jamie's price range. And when the consultant asked Kelly whether she would be willing to pay the difference, there was an awkward silence. Another expert reported that Jennifer Aniston had previously worn the identical outfit, which increased the tension. While everyone was in awe of the Jennifer Aniston outfit, Jamie's financial limitations prevented her from choosing it. In order to get Kelly to back off and let her work, the consultant had to firmly step in. Despite the failures, Jamie persisted in trying on a gorgeous Panina Torne dress that was more affordable. The appeal of the Jennifer Aniston outfit still lingered in her imagination, making everything else seem insignificant in comparison, even though she would have adored it. Jamie was angered by Kelly's criticism of the dress as crystal since she didn't hold back. Jamie began crying as her emotions reached a peak. The consultant, Lisa, took control of the situation by consoling Jamie and helping her choose a different stunning dress with an illusion neckline. This time, Jamie really enjoyed it and strangely, the rest in her group did as well. However, Jamie's judgment remained clouded by the specter of the Jennifer Aniston outfit. Between the outfit she adored and the one that looked out of her price range, she struggled. Her appointment to pick out her wedding dress turned out to be far more difficult and emotional than she had imagined due to the continual influence of her best friend, Kelly. Jamie ultimately decided to carry on with her quest because she was determined to find a dress that would allow her to let go of the fascination of the Jennifer Aniston dress. This won't be up I here. Know. This is going to be down here kind of just because the dress is too big. Can't you do an ivory one? But I'm still in love with that last one. I'm having a hard time getting that one out of my head. Okay. Yeah, I know. Bummer. I know. Jamie understood that she had to select a dress that truly expressed her own style and objectives rather than giving in to the expectations of others, despite Kelly's domineering beliefs making the task difficult. Kelly's interference allowed Jamie to continue the search for the ideal wedding dress. Number 2. Donetta Moore Donetta, a bride-to-be from Michigan who was 43 years old, encountered a difficult issue as she started to search for her ideal wedding dress. It appeared as though Donetta had dragged her entire family along for the voyage, including a dozen opinionated entourage members, including her sisters, children, goddaughters, nephew, nieces, godsister, acquaintances, and even her daughter's cousin. She had mistakenly ignored her own needs, trying to make everyone happy and plan the perfect wedding. Donetta, however, was desperate to locate a head-turning gown that would definitely make her stand out as she had just four months till the big day. Chaos broke out as the bridal consultant innocently asked Donetta's support group for their input. Michigan. So who all did you bring with you today? I brought my daughter, Lanise, my sister, Sashana, Tina, my nephew, JT, and my daughter's cousin, Teal. There was a cacophony of loud and opinionated people, a collision of voices, each presenting opposing viewpoints. It was obvious right once that this mission would be turbulent. Given the plethora of viewpoints in the room, the astute consultants understood that concentrating on Donetta's personal aspirations would be the key to success. In an effort to start off on the right foot, they chose an outfit that Donetta herself liked. But when she came out in the first dress, the audience booed her and demanded her that she go back in the dressing room. The group had no restraint and completely disregarded Donetta's feelings. They expressed their disgust at her initial choice by demanding she put on another dress right away. Donetta, who was obviously hurt and outraged, expressed disgust with the consultants. Unfazed, the advisors moved on to choose a garment that Donetta's sister had recommended. But as soon as Donetta put it on, she despised it, took it off right once, and said she didn't want to go out in such an inappropriate outfit. She reluctantly put dress number three on, only to discover that it was entirely unsuited to her unique style. Frustrated to the point of tears, she sobbed in the dressing room as her restless entourage outside questioned the delay and wondered if she didn't like the outfit they had chosen. As the group grew noisier and clamored to see Donetta in her dress, their impatience turned into a noisy ruckus. They caused a noise that resonated throughout the salon which made Donetta even more upset. 
However, a ray of optimism appeared within the confusion. The show's fashion director, Monty, understood Donetta's acute need for a showpiece. He stepped in and painstakingly picked out a dress that precisely complemented her idea. Donetta finally made her entrance in the eye-catching gown that Monty had personally chosen amid a mixture of excitement and apprehension. But instead of the anticipated cheers and encouragement, the audience reacted with jeers and laughter. Donetta's heart was ripped out by their nasty remarks, which made fun of her appearance and likened her to Big Bird. Their experts were discouraged by the entourage's rude behavior while she stood there, obviously heartbroken. The fashion director took charge of the situation and calmed the audience in a flash of insight and bravery. He challenged the group, reminding them of how important it is to treat the bride with care and respect. It was a wake-up call for Donetta, who realized that she had been so focused on making everyone else happy that she had neglected her own needs. Donetta returned to the stage by finding her inner strength and wearing a straightforward yet magnificent garment that spoke to her own self. The atmosphere in the room fell silent, expressing the seriousness of the situation. She asked each member of her group for their vote in turn, fully anticipating a negative response. But this time, she didn't look to their judgments for approval. She had decided to trust her own judgment after finding her voice. She was no longer intimidated by the unanimous no from everyone in the group. Leanne? Tanisha? She may not have found her dress, but I'll be damned if she didn't find her backbone. Thank you all! Donetta exuded a sense of empowerment and sincerity as she stood tall in her chosen clothing with a renewed sense of self-assurance. She had discovered the priceless lesson that she should put her happiness and self-expression before other people's expectations. Number 1. Alicia Brock Alicia Brock entered the Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta stage full of anticipation and hope, looking forward to a joyful moment shared with her loved ones. Little did she know that the constant criticism from her own family and friends would soon eclipse this special moment. Alicia felt on the point of despair as her bridal party's reactions to seeing the dresses caused a tornado of emotions. I really, really like the fitted top, the sweetheart. Okay. You're so strapless. Too. Her mother wants to guide the show. It's simple. When Alicia's mother, Sandra, assumed control of the appointment and insisted on clothes that didn't suit Alicia's preferences, things started to feel weird. Because of her mother's dominating presence, Alicia grew frustrated and said she thinks she knows everything and insists on having it her way or no way. Even Sandra's ex-husband, her father, concurred, recognizing Sandra's propensity to instigate confrontation when circumstances didn't go her way. Alicia was enchanted by the first garment as she slipped into it after her father had chosen it carefully. Her bridal advisor, who understood the garment allure, echoed her delight. Her friends and family, regrettably, did not feel the same way. Sandra criticized the dress, saying, I don't understand what Alicia's dad was thinking. It's too much dress for her. And then she discarded it, saying, It doesn't represent her. When one of Alicia's bridesmaids cruelly quipped, she looks like a linebacker. The situation worsened. Another acquaintance echoed this harsh sentiment and added, Yeah, she really does. The owner of the clothing shop, Lori, and the fashion consultant, Monty, were horrified by these offensive comments. In the privacy of her home, Lori exclaimed, Seriously? A linebacker? That is offensive. They can undoubtedly use better language. That's a foul. A penalty, Monty said, emphasizing how improper it was to compare a bride to a football player. You guys are aware of what I'm referring to. Alicia found herself struggling under the weight of these terrible remarks, and as she sought refuge in the dressing room, tears flowed down her cheeks. Alicia was hesitant to try on the next dress, even though she was confident it wasn't the appropriate one for her. But she did so to appease her mother. Sandra's disappointment was evident as she made her way outside to tell her group of friends about her mother's decision. She grudgingly acknowledged, okay, maybe it'll look better on the mannequin, and sarcastically added, ball gowns can look beautiful on many people, just not her. Okay, maybe it was prettier on the mannequin. Sandra, please, please, just... Every bride should feel like a beautiful princess, not a tackling dummy. This ends now. The chorus of criticism increased when one of Alicia's pals said, you look like a walking doily, and continued, you look like a mop, a walking mop with a head. The bridal party's actions profoundly angered Lori, who made a sharp distinction between kindness and rudeness by threatening to eject them. 
She was resolved to safeguard Alicia in her precarious situation since she would not stand for such brutality. Lori was a solid tower for strength throughout the tempest of negativity, ready to direct Alicia towards a happier experience. Finally, a pivotal moment occurred as Alicia put on the third dress. This time, Alicia's mother and father complimented her appearance in the gown and she admitted it was the first time in her life that she had ever felt truly beautiful. She was protected by the garment, which acted as a shimmering armor from the critical remarks that had dogged her during the appointment. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.